We are charting the higher octave with the band from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They have a mixture of all kinds of genre. Dicro. I got Peter and Charmaine. Hello. To the band. Welcome, guys. Thank you for joining me. Such a pleasure and honor to have you. Like I was mentioning earlier, the first time I heard that one song, Mercy, uh, that was sent to me by William of uh, Mooncoil Media. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> what is this? man, yeah, they're so amazing. You know, just it has that so many elements, genre, so many genre. You know, it has a dark side, it has a, the blues, it has a, and from what I heard, you guys have your own genre called goth grass, right? <laughs> that's what we're pretending to, yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's, um, that's pretty cool. I like that. I don't think I ever heard that from anybody do that before. <laughs> Well, like a lot of these songs, I should, well, maybe not a lot, but several of them started as kind of folky tunes that I wrote on the ukulele. Um, uh -huh. And that's part of our writing process. Um, and so like, um, so Strangled, um, Mercy, I want to say I started, gosh, In the Cathedral. Um, though by, by In the Cathedral, like we were already abandoned doing stuff. So I was writing it on the ukulele, but like thinking industrial wise. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's there, there's that, but like um, you know, I, I love folk folk music, kind of folk punk, and um, I love folk I love folk music. Oh, I I listen to that on, on when I feel like it, and I have a whole playlist of folk songs, like the, you know the classics, you know, mm -hmm. Gustav, Garfunkel, you mm -hmm. know, just Joan Baez, you know, just all that stuff. I just love it. I love folk music. Yeah. Music in general. I love everything from disco to you you name it. <laughs> you just love it. And but of course I'm 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 a bat, right? So <laughs> <laughs> I'm nocturnal. <laughs> but anyway, you guys are just so amazing. And first of all, let's start off with a little bit about how you guys met. And well, what is the origin of your music and your background? Um, oh, I know like Peter and I have known each other for a long time in the scene and um, a lot of like how we met uh, as bandmates are uh, um, centers around like a venue in, in Pittsburgh. We're having our, our CD release party, Club Cafe. Uh, so we've kind of just met there like during jam sessions and stuff. I think uh, Pete sound packed uh, one or two of my shows. And uh, I, li I like it when how Pete tells the, the pandemic story of how we like actually <laughs> really formed Dicro because it was just a lot of us who kind of knew each other um but then like things really converged uh during that time when we were all apart ironically but it was a good time to work on music for a lot of people um and technology was able to bring us together in a way where we we could uh, actually make some progress and some recordings and write together but yeah Pete do you want to tell that story well, yes, we had uh, we had an idea of uh, making a uh, you know remember like during pandemic all the bands were trying to get this thing on the internet like a jam together on the internet which wasn't really possible because of the latency that it, yeah, that yeah. exists between computers so we kind of faked it we recorded our parts separately and I spliced it all together and turned out like a nice nice live jam so we took um, took the song called uh, the Men of Constant sorrow uh a, a classic you know uh, americana tune uh, and we made it into an industrial tune with with uh, with synth riffs and with like really heavy drums and and guitars but still we left that little bit of the uh americana flavor in it uh we had our friend megan williams jo join us dirk on guitar tracy on drums of course char and myself and this is like a co th that that group of people pretty much uh, is still here as a band as dicro this is how we met together as musicians this is our first project that we did together and after that after that uh, online jam uh, char sent me a song uh, and she wanted i think you wanted me to do a, a remix for it or or my own so, one lane bridge you want to talk yeah. you want to talk oh. about one lane bridge yeah 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 so that was so we, we did we did that jam session and that's just sort of like in, ignited the spark of like oh yeah we can collaborate and like maybe just start writing some stuff and pete and i um when i lived in in nolens actually pete did a lot of mixing for me on uh, a bunch of my original 
songs. And so we'd collab that way. And we talked a little bit about actually like writing together and doing some other stuff. Um, Cause he knew that I was into like the goth industrial scene and, and that kind of music too. And, and once in a while I even play with synthesizers. Um, but I, I did, I was, I'm very inspired by things that like are happening around me and that atmosphere of the world and that sort of stuff. And just, there was a lot of overwhelming emotion and, and a lot of thoughts happening. And I channeled those into a song and I thought, oh, this is probably a good thing to send to Pete. And what I, what I wanted was, yeah, like just for you to work your production magic on it. And I was like, you know, I know he'll be able to fill this out. I knew that Pete had a really good ear um, for different sounds and yeah, <laughs> yeah they work really well. Um, <laughs> so I was like, I think this would be cool to give him to play with because, and that's all, that has really been our writing process uh, for almost the entire album. There's two songs on it that were um, written by um, Pete before um, all, of, all of this happened that we decided to keep and, and rework a little bit and, and roll into the, to the album. Um, and that's uh, Mercenaries and- um, Desert Resort. Resort, yeah. Um, but the rest are kind of like things that I sent him these, these skeleton sketches of like lyrics and maybe a couple of synth lines. Um, I have a Yamaha, like a little, like Yamaha came out with that cool series of like the mini synthesizers. I got one of those um, that I love to tool around with and a micro brute. Um, for the crunchy, angry stuff. And so the microbrute made it into um, One Lane Bridge along with all of my, my lyrics. But it was, it was funny because like, I'm a, I like um, Trent Reznor's writing style. I like the mm -hmm. slow, sludgy, angry drawn out. And that's what One Lane Bridge was. That's also what Exhale was when I first sent those songs to Pete. And what Pete did with One Lane Bridge like blew my mind. <laughs> it was so different from what I sent him different in a way that I was just like oh my god like I could actually hear this on like happening on the radio I was like this is he made something from from this that's a completely different than what I had in my head but I liked it like from that first like the the synths just gave me chills that da, 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 da. I'm like oh that's the freaky fanfare that I could pull out of myself <laughs> it fits with the vibe of the song because it's very sarcastic and very like it's um, the word, um, it, uh, it escapes me sometimes, um, satire, it's very satirical, um, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of tongue in cheek and there's a lot of, a, a lot of like real stuff in that song, um, but, but that just really set the tone for it, I think, um, so, and, so who's the, who write the lyrics for the, for the songs, mostly, okay, and the, the, the last song, um, Mercenaries, right? And okay. uh, and the uh, Diner du Jour is, is is Peter from the yeah. beginning. Dinner oh. Dinner du Jour has been uh, that song has been written in English originally, but we decided that we would like to sing it in French. So I have this ver very good friend of mine who uh, who is a French interpreter, and uh, he took upon himself to poetically uh, translate the lyric from English to French. And that's how it ended up on our record with Charmaine beautifully singing it in French. I, I love this song. It's one of my favorite songs on the record. <laughs> I know that's beautiful. Yeah, actually, it's so many, I, you know, like my my favorite so far. It, it might change next week, but <laughs> keep us done, which is just so beautiful. And and, and I heard it. If, if, if you know people want to check you guys out, you have all you have, you also have a YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and you see the. I guess uh, it's it's an acoustic version of that, right? It was just so beautifully done. So this this album is is coming out. It's, it's called it's out. Uh, yeah, it's coming out on the twenty third, right? Yeah, it's on Friday. Okay, yeah. So it's, it's today. Friday. Today is coming out in Poland. Actually, we have a pre pre premiere in Poland today on oh, okay. uh, on the major radio station in Poland today. Actually, as we speak. They probably play it. I have to check it because I'm recording it. So <laughs> <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So stained glass, and for some for some reason, you know, stained glass is connected to the name of your band, to the name of your yeah. Maybe you can explain a little bit about what what is Dicro and where where it uh, where did it come from and what's the origin and why did you choose that name? Absolutely, absolutely. And 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 the stained glass. Yeah, it did originally. Um, it did kind of. It was meant to be like a play on the band name because um, mm -hmm. the 
the, band, the name was inspired by the look of dichroic glass. And usually I have a, a dichroic glass piece and I would show the camera that and I, I forgot today, I'm sorry. But, um, but if you're familiar with it, it's, it's this like, you, it'll, a lot of times there's a couple different colors of glass and then there's all these shimmery little flecks of, 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 um, of uh, mineral in there and they kind of catch the light. And it's just, it's something that kind of changes and shifts and like you can look at it and it looks like one thing and then you, you look a little further and you see more, there's just more to it than. Yeah, I mean, I see that in you actually. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You, you're very much of that, 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 that glass. I mean, because you have <laughs> all these different things in you, you know, it, it's, it's because I see it more like not just, not just the image of the glass, but more of like, the feelings, the emotion, the you know, the 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 different elements that you that you have in your music, right? Yes, yes, that's yes. That's why, yeah. yeah, thank you. And that's that's why I like it just kind of like popped into into my head and like we were kicking around band names one day and that was one I like threw out there and we kind of went, oh, you know, huh. Um, we feel like that, that will work. And, uh, and I actually have had people come up to me, uh, finally, they're like, oh, you know, dichro, like dichroic glass. And, and they, they love it. Like whenever I say, yeah, that's it. They're like, oh yeah, sweet. Uh, it resonates with them. And so it's really what, like we were hoping for. And, and like you said, with, with the music, that's how our music is. It's, it, it's, there's just, there's, there's a lot to it with the layers of synth sounds that Pete put, Pete puts in with the emotion and the, and the, the lyric, um, the lyrics that, that I write. Um, we like to have something that's, and, and just the songs too, like they, they differ. We have a sound some, somehow <laughs> it, it, it all comes together. Um, but each song is, is quite different from, from the last one. And, yeah. Um, yeah. They're all different. Yeah. I I think that the, uh, the the common denominator of all those songs, we try to keep the songs in the minor keys. And, and of course, we have a, a, an amount of electronics in the sound, which pretty much makes that continuity, keeps the continuity between between the songs. I'm, I'm, I'm with Charmaine on, on it. We're all over place as far as stylistics, but I'm trying to keep everything together by incorporating synthesizers and samples in it. I mean, we are after our dark wave band, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you guys can, you guys can actually attract a different group of different groups of people, not just a dark wave community. You know? we, we are we're counting on it. Actually, that, that's that has been our strategy. That's why we have two versions of the band. One it's electric, one it's acoustic. And uh, uh, sure, you maybe you want to talk about the acoustic project a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we do really like presenting the songs in in that way, because um, like they are a lot of times they're they originate on an acoustic instrument. Um, and and it's it's wonderful to pull that that organic um kind of the organic feeling, vibe the vibe yes <laughs> back into back into the music um and uh so with our acoustic project because we we love representing and reworking the songs so much that way um but we're also a group of people who um feel feel certain weights of the world um, at different times. And, and I've, I've worked in animal rescue specifically with cats, uh, for quite some time. I kind of have a small rescue operation. Oh, wow, that's cool. Um, we yeah. are, we are all cat parents, by the way. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> well, well, except, except Dirk, but he did rescue a kitten. Um, and he's, and he, and he loves his doggos. Mm. Um, but we're all, we've all got, you know, big hearts when it comes to animals and we want to be able to do some good with the music too and my personal struggle is like i'm so busy and i i, I do want to get into volunteering with shelters i do a lot of work out of my home and uh and pocket um but we thought that it would be really cool to use the music to raise some money to donate to the myriad local rescue and spay oh, neuter operations yeah. um that are in in pittsburgh and eventually beyond um you know i don't really want to put a ceiling on it honestly um, but to start with, we thought it would be really cool to do a, a full length version of the album um, where it's all acoustic versions of the song. Be, I, I would love to hear that. I love acoustic. Yeah, well, I think you'll really be into you'll be really into this because it'll still have our style of like playing and Pete's style of like mixing and mastering. 
um, but it's going to be all acoustic tracks. And since there's 11 of them, um, we're not going to start right when we drop the album. It'll be like about a month afterwards. We want to start on Bandcamp Friday when Bandcamp has the most traffic to it and the artist keeps 100% of the profits. So it would be the most profitable day to release a track there. Um, we want to release an acoustic track each month and then donate. The oh, that's great. That's a good idea. Thank you. Yeah. We were like, oh, like this, is, there's something there that we can really utilize to a greater good. And, yeah. That's, that's a really good thing. Yeah. And speaking of cats, I, you were in Netflix, right? Yeah. Yeah. Netflix cat people episode yeah. two with uh, the rock cats rescue, AKA amazing acro cats. And I was on tour with that group uh, for gosh, I think I worked with them closely for seven, eight years. Um, and I'm still in touch with everybody. So yeah. And uh, you know, you know, I was just looking at the at your background. I know you you guys have you know have other projects, different talents. I know Peter, you you play the stand up bass as well, right? Well, actually, uh, played it's a little bit overreaching. I started playing upright bass exactly this year on January first. Oh. This is my midlife crisis kind of situation because I've been bass player all my life, and I decided, hey, I'm gonna pick up a bigger bass. So I I did, and I picked up upright bass and start playing since January 1st of this year. Exactly. Um, but as far as my history, I've been always been uh, connected to industrial golf scene. Um, I, uh, I had as uh, two years uh, of uh, playing keyboards with uh, the electric hellfire club. That's yeah. 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 Club. That's really yeah. Cool. yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I, I did. I did a couple tours with those guys back in my old country. I toured with Cluster Keller as a bass player. Uh, Cluster Keller is like the first original and the biggest Polish goth band, and also had my own own band called Brilitz Creek with with whom I played back in Poland. We reactivated just recently in 2019 to do a, a little mini tour in Poland as well, um, and. And on top of this, I played in a bunch of, uh, you know, industrial projects here in Pittsburgh, like Maze and uh, Venus in Ferris. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, well, you, you guys and, and, and Charmaine, I know that. Um, so I was watching the, your uh, your other cover, which I think was so beautiful, which is one of my favorite songs from Dead Can Dance. You know, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Is Mr. Yeah. Love Grove. And, um, and I noticed on the video you have uh, your fire. You, you do fire, right? I do. I yeah, do. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Breathe it. I spin it. Oh, uh, cool. <laughs> and you're you're a, a stilt walk walker, right? So what do you call yeah. those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I can see all that. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. you, guys, yeah. you guys, that, would, that would play. This would play really well in Hawaii, I think. You know. <laughs> the, the, yeah. I'm trying to figure it out. How can we get to Hawaii with a band? <laughs> I actually I have spun fire in in Hawaii as well. Um, you have? Yeah, yeah. Um, when was that? Ago, yeah, a bunch of years ago. Um, I can't remember the name of the park because it was almost a decade ago. I was there for about a month and just like lived and worked and and we my um my partner at the time and I went to the fire jams there and there'd be like a DJ spinning music and just all of these like local pyros and I, was, I you know i wonder when where that if you could remember that think back and because i you know i've been i've been doing this forever i was probably uh, well, I, might I, have been there, huh? I know the people in the fire and who do that you know oh that's cool that's yeah, so they, cool. They, they, oh. uh, you know the fire thing yeah, <laughs> and, yeah and then i, I noticed like, you were doing that and i was going oh wow yeah, yeah yeah it was really cool to 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 get to be like there and kind of see how their jams were run and the different styles of the spinners I remember the park was like kind of an amphitheater there were and we were on Big Island um and so oh, there in the were, Big like, Island oh okay okay yeah where, where, where are you where, where are you located I'm in Oahu Honolulu uh, okay yeah cool. yeah so I'm, I'm here but you know we're all connected to the islands you know it's really close yeah to each yeah so Peter, have you been to Hawaii? Uh, I've been to Hawaii twice, and uh, two times I didn't I didn't spend a penny there, believe it or not, because I went for work. I'm a filmmaker, and um, I've been to Hawaii twice to do some video work with uh, 
uh, with a group of cyclists. Actually, that was pretty interesting. Um, I was driving a car with mounted cameras, and we would uh, we would go on on the bicycle rides around the, around the Big Island, uh, uh, Kauai, and uh, um, uh, what, what's uh, what's the one? Uh, oh my God, uh, the one between Oahu and Kauai. So there's Kona, there's um, there's Maui. Maui, Maui. Oh my God, brain freeze. I hate uh -huh. that. You see, Maui is actually my favorite place in in Hawaii. So um, so yeah, I was I was pretty much producing a, a cycling videos uh, where I would like you know follow oh, wow. the group of cyclists around around Hawaii and and I've been to places, you know, I, I pretty much drove across. Uh, those three islands uh, back and forth many, many times. Um, what I like about Hawaii the most is that it's not like the, the mainland United States. Like people drive under speed limit and everybody is listening to reggae music. It's freaking awesome, man. I mean, it's so chill. <laughs> I like that under the speed limit driving, you know, it's like everybody, nobody's like hurry, you know, maybe maybe in Oahu is different, but like Maui, everybody's like total vacation mood, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll be right back here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's part of beautiful place, beautiful place. I mean, this is this is a uh, paradise, really. I'd, I'd love to live on Hawaii. Yeah, it's definitely a paradise here. I, I've, uh, yeah, I, I hear that a lot. Yeah, it's so laid back over there. It's a little bit slower living. Hey, you know, it probably, I don't know, it's probably less stress compared to other. You places. know what I want to do? You you know what I want to do? I want to snowboard and snorkel within half an hour of oh. each other. Which is possible in Hawaii. Snowboard and snorkel. Right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Snowboard and snorkel within half an hour. I mean, come on. You can do it in Hawaii. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Hawaii is a great place. Yeah, so, and you guys are um, not too far from Hawaii. <laughs> well, you're in, you're in Phil uh, Pennsylvania, right? Yes, we're in Pittsburgh. Pennsylvania. Yeah. So I, I was like I was saying, you know, I was listening to the to the cover of the ubiquitous Mr. Lovegrove and just you and, and I love it that you're singing it, Charmaine. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's well, a, it was kind of a cool twist because because, yeah. you know, it's a it's a it's a song sung by a Mel. And and we we decided okay sh let's 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 give it to Charmaine. I mean that's that put a totally different spin, emotional spin on this tune. I think and yeah and yes and yes turn turn out great. We had so many compliments after we released this song. So yeah, I think it was a good good move, especially that it was like our first attempt to uh, to become a band here in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And because of that video, we got we landed couple couple like uh, first gigs that we played here so oh, wow. it, it definitely yeah, it definitely awesome. helped us yeah it's a really good you guys did it really well and and that's hard to do that song it's, you know because that's dead can dance right have you guys heard my interview with lisa gerard I mean, no but i will after you told me i will dig it out absolutely yeah, yeah, <laughs> an interview with her. i did about a year maybe a year ago during the, oh. during the pandemic around the pandemic time was she in hawaii no, she's in. She was in Australia. Yeah, we did oh, okay. a phone phone call. Yeah, nice, great. Yeah, we talked about the origins, you know, the beginnings of that can dance and her latest project and all that kind of stuff. It's a magical music. I mean, I grew up with that can dance. I I grew up with a whole uh, this oh, whole yeah. group group of bands from Four AD label. I mean, uh, it's mm -hmm. it's it's magical. It's it's like oh, yeah. something oh, okay. that doesn't exist anywhere else. That, that label is definitely magical, even especially back in those days. Right. It was the beginning of so many. That's my, I grew up listening to 4AD. So that's, yep, me too. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was, I'm really excited for your release because it's coming out in uh, on Friday, the 23rd, which is in a few days. And I'm, I'm going to try to get this interview out around that time. So cool. yes, it'd be so cool. But one of my favorite tracks from this particular from this album, Stained Glass, is Shiva's son. Mm -hmm. So is there like a story behind your songs? Yes, there, yeah. well, and sometimes multiple stories. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, and that's that's kind of a thing, like my writing, a lot of times I'll start off kind of one thing, one way, but then something else will come through and I'll go, oh, that, that works too. But Shiva's son, 
particularly um, so the atmosphere of the time, there were just so many arguments and so many people just getting into it and being upset and just shooting off, you know, their mouths and like upsetting each other so much upset and, and, and so much negative energy flying around. And so I kind of as a way of coping, you know, because music is an outlet and it's there's a catharsis there. And I've always I've always channeled things and written my feels out, you know, as a way mm -hmm. to kind of get them out and process them. Um, and then performing the songs again, it's like if I can put a message or, or a vibe into things, but a lot of times it's just a message, even if it's subtle. Um, but she just sounds a little bit less subtle. It literally says, careful what you what you put out there um, because it'll come back and it'll come back again and again and again and again and again. And so, you know, the feeling of like trying to put that out there and remain calm and stable, but then like the, the wailing vocals of the again it's it, it sort of gets that feeling of the torture that that you can feel as, as as someone who's either receiving you know this horrible energy or you know or receiving the backlash you know mm -hmm. just reminding people of that like hey you know we've got a long haul here and we're not doing our, ourselves any service just hurting each other constantly so that's really like the vibe of that song. It's like, think about what you're putting out there before before you do it. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to the acoustic version when you have it out, when you guys put hey. that, because I think that song will really stand out in that particular. It, 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 it'll, it'll be a different, because I I, I heard it on on my on, the, on your YouTube channel. Yeah, I love, Adrian has such an amazing ear and he, every time we'll do things, he might do it a little bit different, His but his improvisational skills are just, yeah. they're phenomenal they're so phenomenal. so adrian is your other guitarist mm -hmm. so so maybe you can just go through the your your band members just do a little shout out to them yeah yeah tracy our drummer with us from day one absolute rock solid so dedicated and and we've we throw a lot at her <laughs> and what we do is not it's not easy for any of us yeah. um she plays to to a click and she's very, very versatile too. Um, she plays percussion in different bands. And so like, there's there's all of that. And Adrian is just an absolute gem, has come over from Indonesia. And um, Pete met him at an open, an open jam um, and was like, Charmaine, this guy, like check him out. Like we need to work with him. And I he's like, oh yeah, yeah, like- Totally awesome. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just he he really is that missing component that that helps us bring the blues in and bring that full. Yeah, thing. yeah. And you know, I, I love I love blues, and that's like whoa. I mean, it just melts my heart, you know, to hear that the way that is played. That's why I was just saying you guys have different elements of your music. So it's uh -huh. not just it doesn't just have that dark, you know, for for the goth crowd is for is for the blues crowd is for the bluegrass crowd is for the country crowd. I mean, you name uh -huh. it, you know. It can, it can... I, I I always characterize our music like a, a struggle between a human and the machine, and the human is winning. <laughs> you shall not take the heart out of it. <laughs> it's got a soul. It's got a soul. Um, and 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 Dirk too. He's um, a phenomenal acoustic guitar player, um, and I'm I'm looking forward to what he'll contribute to the acoustic project as well. And his his skill set um, has really come as, as a professional musician uh, has really come in handy with us because he um, pretty pretty soon after we really solidified as a, as a band he ended up moving three uh -huh. four hours from Hanover so he what he does is really amazing because he practices and stays in practice on his own we don't really get to rehearse with Dirk um, we were we were for a while um, and we rehearsed a lot together in Pittsburgh before he moved. So that helped a lot. Um, but he'll come in rehearsed and play the show. Um, so that's, that's really amazing. This is, this is how professional this guy is. <laughs> yeah. And his, and his like ability to change tones and like really dial in the sound of the guitar and, and nail these songs time, yeah. after, time after time. It's, just it's, so yeah, it's, it's really hard to find guitar players who are not only 
skilled technically, but they also come with their own sound. And Dirk is one of those guys that yeah, he, not, not only he's good, like his fingers and stuff, he comes with the whole concept of sound for each project that he plays with. And he fits 100% with us because he knows exactly what he wants. And that's yeah. that's a very, very cool uh, feature to have as a musician to just not only blend in with his skills, but also blend in with the sound and actually uh, give us a little extra push with that sound yeah no you you guys are really tight as, as a band you guys are all together i mean really i, I have to say because because we're old farts and we've been doing it forever <laughs> oh, I mean, you guys you guys flow well together <laughs> you guys flow yeah. well together so how, 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 how did you guys meet jim somatic of the distortion productions that's uh that's, oh, that's wow. the, your label yeah I've just known him a long time. I've been going uh, to um well I when I was when I was a youngling, um, I would go to the goth nights, the goth industrial nights. And so I know like Jim's known me from that scene um oh, for yeah, a yeah. long time. And and I've um and I've played out um a couple times and kind of like been in and out of the crowd touring and doing the work that I did with the Acrocats kind of took me away and I moved around for a long time. So you know, that sort of took me away from things, but, but we remembered each other and, you know, from afar, I've tried to like support and be like, oh, that's sweet, you know, and just kind of kept, kept my, my finger on the pulse of the scene, um, in that way. But, but yeah, so we've known each other God, probably a couple decades at least. Yeah, so yeah. I, I the same, the same, the same here. I mean, uh, I know Jim from 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 the scene, from uh, goth industrial scene here in Pittsburgh, and as long as I remember, you know, he was uh, a, a very distinct feature of that scene. He was always around, so that's how we know Jim. Jim, Jim's a good friend. Yeah. yeah. So my, I, I also did an interview, so I, I haven't I haven't released that yet, but I will around the same time I'm releasing yours. So I'm looking forward oh. to. Uh, to doing that together, which is gonna work out pretty good. But um, yeah, you guys are just so amazing, and I'm I'm really so um I'm happy that we're able to connect because I I always wow. I wanted that right away. And so the version that the other version of Mercy is a remix. So tell us about that one. It's different. Oh, different. That's, all, that's all Pete. Well, before before I tell you about the remix, I gotta tell you how we stumble upon the whole goth grass thing because that didn't occur immediately. What happened was we had a demo song, Mercy, which was recorded with all electronic and electric instruments. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if your audience knows how bands shoot music videos, but what they do, they fake playing, okay, while, while they are being filmed. So in order to fake play, you need a you need a track. So we use that track, the original track that we recorded for Mercy, but we were all set up in a camper with an upright bass, with resonator guitar, with a banjo. So after we shot this whole piece and I looked at it, I'm like, okay, something's not right here. Uh, we, I mean, we, we, we kind of shake those instruments, but it would be really cool if actually those instruments sounded on this song. So I went back into the studio. I erased all the bass, tra bass tracks. We erased um, uh, some of the guitar tracks and we replaced bass with an upright and we added resonator guitar and that's that's how that whole flavor uh started that's that's how we discovered oh man this is this is something new this is something cool it wasn't really the the man of constant sorrow although we already talked about it but we kind of forgot about this whole idea of mashing americana with industrial yeah. but but with mercy that was so obvious to us that man and we we got to do something about it so now we are uh, the, the the future songs that are going to come up uh, I believe they're gonna be uh, util utilizing that sound more often than than just than just Mercy. How did the remix come up? Well, I do remixes, so uh, I went wild. I went totally wild. I, I I stripped the whole tune back to Charmaine's vocals. I I gave it some crazy synthesizer line, like very distorted, kind of Trent Reznor-ish uh, sounding uh, uh, 
a synthesizer riff. And uh, that's that's pretty much how I, the funny thing was, uh, there was a little bit that Charmaine recorded. Um, can you tell can you tell her? Yeah, yeah can, can you tell her about Boom? <laughs> and I forget how it came across because you voice to texted me about that when you were first asking and it came across as something else. And I was like, what is he talking about? Um, there's the little part at the end of the uh, song where where uh, naturally a drop would occur. So yeah. instead of a drop, we had Charmaine say "boom" and then drop. Okay, yeah. kind of you know chicken tongue kind of thing. Uh, so we recorded that "boom" in my car on the iPhone. Actually. <laughs> Playing Millville Music Festival. Yeah, we're we're sitting in the parking lot or whatever, and and I'm like, Shar, this is gonna be your shortest uh, recording session ever. Just say <laughs> say boom to my uh, to my iPhone. And... You were trying to get me to do it all week, and I was so busy, and I kind of kept forgetting. And I have a little bit of like that perfectionist edge of like, no, it has to. I got to sit down and like try it these ways. And, well, you gave me two or three different ways to say it too, I think. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, oh, I just want to focus and nail it. And yeah, we, we picked up the sexy version. Version. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Psycho yeah. Tribe is you, Peter? Is that is that your remix? Yes, yeah. that's 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 my remix name. Yeah, I've been oh, uh, cool. I've been I've been uh, doing remixes under that name since oh my god, since twentieth century. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a really good remix. It's really good. So thank you. Tell us about the album cover. I know stained glass is a. Uh, it's just. I mean that 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 speaks to me in so many ways. You know, when I think of stained glass, I. I think of the Gothic cathedrals, right? And yeah, uh, yeah. and yeah. um, and it, it kind of I, I could see why you chose that because it, first of all, dichro and the different glass, the different emo. But I see the stained glass in the Gothic cathedral, like when the sun comes through the, the depending on what time of the day it is, like mm -hmm. when it's noon, the sun comes in differently. Mm -hmm. and it's like three o'clock; it's a little different as well. So it's like a different emotions. Like that yeah. can go through the different lights, different sound, you know, it's just, it just changes everything. So, yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, you're, you're nailing it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's really, I mean, there's probably more to it than that, but it's a beautiful cover. Yeah. And just all the different things too, because each panel of glass, it's one of those things where you can control it a little bit, but you can't. And each one yeah. has its own different subtle pattern. And what I did was I put different images into into the glass and they're kind of buzzed out in that so it's very like subtle and almost subconscious um but instead of like swirling it around i used photographs and images to just like subtly convey different uh, emotions mm -hmm. and feelings and the overall vibe of the album is it's it's sort of like there's a lot of darkness and 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 things that we're struggling with there's a lot of struggle but there's also a lot of hope and so like the position of of it's my shadow um in the in the glass but it's it's we want to emanate like a feeling of like hope and 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 prayer and like just like pleading with the universe like please let's reconcile let's let's get some some mm. peace happening because the album it does it's meant to take you on like a journey emotionally yeah, yeah it really like does. a lot of conflict and like and then there's like some messaging in there with mercy and shiva's son um and then mercenaries just kind of hit you at the end with like, you know, let's let's pull out of the stops, you know, use your heart, think with your head, use your heart, you know, don't take the crap that we're being fed and let's work towards a brighter future together. So th there's an image of a woman on the on the, on the cover as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's me. <laughs> that's you. OK, OK. That, that is me. Yeah, we shot that in, in Peter's um, in Peter's home. Um, so I'm, I'm a graphic designer. That is one of my trades. Um, oh, and I, I put together that as a big projection piece because we wanted to create the look of, of, of a stain of stained glass windows, you know, kind of falling on a person. And we played with, we did a lot of different um, ways of shooting that and kind of playing with the light and the shadow. I love it. I, I love your, the name of the, you know, the font you're using for your, for, for your project. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then just the whole... It's, it's, it's nicely done. I could I could tell you guys put a lot of work into everything that you're doing. Yeah. Mostly hard. It's it's all comes from the heart. Soul, heart and soul for sure. Mm -hmm. So do you guys have any upcoming um upcoming shows or any upcoming activities or uh, oh, yeah. 
Well, we have we have a release party here in Pittsburgh on the twenty third. Um, uh, that's that's going to be a cool show. We uh, we rarely play as a uh, uh, with all our toys. This one it's going to be a full audiovisual feast for our fans with uh, with uh, back uh, back projection, video projection, and with our light show. You know, it's kind of hard for the band of our caliber to uh, come to a small club and set up all our toys, you know, for every show. That's why we only pick the special occasions for that. When we when we actually ha headlining and we can set it all up and make sure that it all works. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in, on, in October, I guess the, uh, Jim Simonic and myself were putting together the dark, uh, uh, what is it called? Dark style. Uh, yeah, Dark Style Festival with all regional uh, goth and industrial bands. So this is going to be a first one because we never, we haven't had it in a while where we would showcase all gothic and industrial bands uh, like from Pittsburgh area, which is going to be interesting and fun, uh, especially that, that, that show. That's a live show. Live yes. Show. yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's in Pittsburgh. That's Okay. It's in Pittsburgh in, in Club Cativo, and it's going to be, what 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 day is that? I that think it's remember, October 25th, and we need to remember September yeah. Rock for Life, too. Yeah, we have another show that we play. This is this is a fundraiser for um, uh, for a girl who uh, uh, who's fighting with cancer. So um, oh, we put nice. together, really yeah, a bunch a bunch of bands get together and 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 put resources together, and hopefully we can raise some money to help this girl. Um, Next year, we're planning on actually going to 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 Europe. Uh, we're working on being on. I don't know if you know of Castle Festival, uh, Castle Party Festival in Poland. Uh, this is like a uh, uh, biggest uh, biggest goth industrial festival in Eastern Europe. Uh, it's lo located on a courtyard of 14th century Gothic castle. I mean, it's amazing. Wow. Yeah, it's 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 a beautiful place, and I guess uh, the mission was head, headlining this year. I don't know who's going to be headlining next next year, but but this is a serious, seriously big and a serious festival uh, that that's happening there. So we're concentrating on booking, you know, booking festivals because uh, we have professional lives and we can't really devote our time to touring like you know yeah. other bands do so we're going to be doing like uh, a weekend one-offs uh we're going to try to get to to this festival circle here in the states and also in europe oh that's great yeah you guys are busy <laughs> yeah and, and and then you got to go back and, and and release your your um acoustic version so that i, I know you guys are busy yeah. <laughs> busy, busy is good, you know. Busy is oh, good. Yeah, yeah, busy. Yeah, busy. We busy. got another remix for in the works for One Lane Bridge. Actually, I think Pete's done with it. Yeah, it, it was yeah. done. It was done. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would love to hear that as well. Yeah, it's good. It's this is our homage. This is our homage to New Order. Oh, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so it's gonna sound a little bit different than everything else uh, that oh, we yeah, put out. New order, but know. there's there's still a little bit of goth grass element in it. Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't resist. <laughs> Bluegrass. Oh, that's interesting. Yep. Oh. Well, I, I'm 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 sure I'll be always surprised and amazed at all the stuff you'll be you'll be coming up with in the future because you guys are just you guys are great and amazing and. Uh, I recognize it immediately the first time I heard that one well, song. Well, thank you, thank you so much, and and I I hope we can uh, keep in touch because you know a new songs gonna be coming out. I'd, I'd love to send yeah, it over to you, yeah. and uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're friends now for sure. You know, <laughs> absolutely. Yay. I followed you. We followed you. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. thank you. So <laughs> if, if people wanna if people wanna check you guys out, you you guys are in Distortion Productions. Yes, and I'll put the link on the bottom of this interview, and uh -huh. and you're releasing. Stained glass. Your album. Yeah, it's on, it's on Spotify. It's on uh, Bandcamp. Uh, I can I can send you links also for for publication. So yeah, so it's coming out and and uh, and I'm looking forward to future shows and future your know, future albums. And you know, thank you, thank you both for joining me. It's such an honor and a pleasure to have you. Thank, thank you, you thank you, and aloha. Yeah, yeah. Aloha, yeah no, it's not just not just aloha. It's dark aloha. <laughs> and it's, a, it's like mahalo, it's a, <laughs> mahalo. Like mahalo. <laughs> okay, all right well thank you guys